Hello men, ladies, gentlemen, girls, whoever you are, uh, thanks for tuning in. Here we are now with part 19 of this um, big bad buff build for beginners. And uh, today, we, in the last part we did some painting, we did some camouflage painting, and now we're going to look at adding all the, the black around the sides of the engines here. Um, so before we start, just suggest anyone who hasn't already, please subscribe, hit that like button, and uh, hit the notifications bell to get notified when part 20 comes up. And if you haven't already seen them, if you go back through my catalogue, the previous 18 parts to this are all there for you to see. And there's, I am doing a tiny little bit of work off camera because obviously like you don't need to see me sand every single joint and every single part. And also because it's for beginners, in the beginning, first few videos, I have literally covered everything, you know, from taking the parts off the sprues to cleaning up the sprue nibs to sanding parts flat. We cover thinning out the trailing edges. We've done a lot of work like replacing these panel lines. These, believe it or not, these were all sanded off and then these are actually replaced, these raised panel lines. Um, not rescribing it, so, um, and, and, and I explained that a million times. So now we're looking at um, doing some more painting and we're going to paint the black undersides, as I say, just on the engines and the tanks and then we can mask them up. So it's basically because to paint these, we need to be holding it like this and like this and getting in here and everything on the insides of them. And you can imagine doing that as a massive B-52 would be a nightmare. So we're going to paint the engines and the drop tanks or the wing tanks basically on the model, on the wing. And then we'll mask all this off with some tissue paper or whatever. And then we'll, um, and then we'll carry on with the rest of the build. I'm also going to paint the pylons, but I'll do them separate. So... Basically, I've got my sausages here. Now, what this is, this is white tack. Don't use, you can use blue tack, but um, white tack doesn't have an oil. Um, you can see no color staining. Um, you've probably all seen it where you leave blue tack on the wall for ages when you take it away, it leaves an oily patch. This doesn't tend to do that, although I'm looking around my walls now. I've had a couple of things up with it and it, and it does leave a mark, um, but it's nothing like as bad as blue tack. So, Basically, I've got some sausages here. I've got 12 sausages made up, four for the tanks and eight for the engines. Now, what we've got to do is achieve a squiggly line. And I'll put a picture up now. And this is going to show you basically how the B-52 camouflage was. Um, we can see in the instructions they're showing something similar, but it's nothing like as pronounced. So I'm going to kind of go halfway down the route because you, you have to be careful with photographs. They may be restored aircraft. They may have been repainted. So we're going to go for a wavy line, but probably not as, def as definite as that photograph. So I'll start off with this wing tank. It's going to be the easiest one to do. So we're going to use one of our longer sausages. And basically we can see here when we look at the aerial view that it looks like the whole wing tank is painted. But you can see down here the actual pylon is black. So... The actual pylon there and the pylon up to the trailing edge of the wing is black. So what we're going to do, I haven't actually thought about doing the trailing edge. I'll need to make some more little sausages for that. Um, so what we're going to do is take our sausage and we've got it to about, I don't know, roll it out a little bit more. About four millimetre diameter. You don't want it too thin because then it becomes difficult to mask off around it. You don't want it too thick because if you have it too thick, as I showed you in part 18, you end up with a very soft line. So the pylon is going to be black. So basically we're going to go from here. So we're going to start there and then we can come around. OK, and come around the side like this. Now, it's also worth noting that the actual black paint is comes more up the side than it's not sort of 50 percent. So we can roughly put our blue tack in or white tack in place like that. And then we can take the end away. And there's our bit for the trail end for the uh, tail end. So we can fold that up out of the way. Now with this in place, we can push it and squeeze it and do whatever we want. So I can make these kind of squiggles by using my fingers. And I'm sure this is a technique that I should have practiced before on camera, but basically we can do this. In fact, it might be easier to do it as we go. Yeah, it will. So I think I'm gonna start again. So we'll just roll that out again so it's flat. Because as I showed you as well in part 18, if you end up with having it all uneven and squash bits, the lower the the lower the height, if you like, of the of the sausage, you end up with a tighter line. So you don't want it to be all varying all over the place. So we'll start here. Okay, and then we'll come around 
and we will come down the side and then we'll go up like this and then down and then up and then down and then up to the end like so so we'll move that one there I don't think there's any art in this or any science I don't think there's any exact shape they probably just because they were building so many of the bloody things they probably just painted them I don't know if they had templates and stuff so there we go and you can see that the black comes up actually higher than halfway okay so we need to try and remember that on the um, on the engines as well so on this side we'll start here I'll just squeeze that onto there so that it joins up and I want to make sure you can see down in here okay down in there we've got it overlapping so with the back of a paintbrush because it's got a nice round end on it I'm just going to push that in fact that's not got a nice round end on it at all this one has I'm just going to push that in like that so they blend together and then I can pull it away and just put it back down okay and make sure we get the black on the pylon and then once again as you can imagine you could can you imagine doing this with the aircraft built would be an absolute nightmare it's bad enough with this massive wing you know you could even do this actually before you fit the tanks if you want to might make life a bit easier for you and come down like this and join them together at the point on the nose So I'm not over the moon with how that's gone. So I'm going to take it off again. You can see how well this stuff sticks. And there we go. Then we want it to meet in a point at the nose. And then I will take away the excess. Remember, it's the green we're masking, so we want a nice sharp line below it at the nose. Okay, so there we are. I'm still not over the moon with how that's come out, so I'm going to put some more twists and turns in it. Just like so, and then nudge it down. You don't want to be squeezing it too hard onto it. You you want it to be sort of sitting on the surface rather than compressed into it. That way you get that 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 line that we're after, like this. It's not a hard line, but it's not a soft line either. Okay, so there we go. So I'm happy with that now. And then look at it nose on, and make sure you've got it kind of even. Yeah, I need to come up a bit with this one, like that. There we go. Happy with how that's come out, so that'll be fine, just like that. So I'm going to go on now and do the engines the same. So I'll take one of my shorter pieces and just come along here, start with the front of the engine, give it a little nip down. In fact, we could just squeeze it round to the side there. And then we can pull it up, push it down, up, down, using the panel line as kind of the median, if you like. And then squeeze it in at the back. So there we've got our wavy line there. You can see I've got it floating around the, the panel line. Okay, just round that up a bit so we don't get a hard edge on the front. A little push down that's that one done and I'll do the same on all the others and then I'll come back and show you the rest of the masking okay so we're all sausaged up as it were and what I've got here I've got some Tamiya X18 which is a semi-gloss black I'm using this with Mr Color leveling thinners which is here um, about 60% thinners 40% paint and the reason I'm using this is it comes out of the airbrush extremely well, very, very fine, leaves a very, very fine finish. 
I'm not worried about the semi-gloss aspect because I'm going to be giving this a, a final matte coat anyway and dulling it all down. Um, I realise that the instructions call for a semi-gloss or even a gloss black and when you see these B52Ds they were actually gloss black but if you look at any pictures of them after they've done a, bit, a few years of service they are extremely matte in fact they're even dulling down to dark grey so that's how this one's going to be. So I've got the, the paint in the airbrush just going to check the flow now because we only got the the sausage there we've got nothing above we need to be very careful that we stay to the edge so I'm going to start back here on the uh, tank and basically just very very lightly spray the black on here and I'm going to stay 90 degrees to the sausage now I explained all this in 18 you need to stay 90 degrees to the sausage because you want to make sure that the paint doesn't go up under and if you're going to keep a nice even edge then that's what you need to be doing I can get that all blacked out there and get some black in there and basically the objective of this exercise is literally just to get a black line over the camouflage okay and then we can come to the outside of the wing tank Again, staying 90 degrees. You can see how light the paint is going on. It's just basically a, a shadow, just going on very, very lightly. Okay, and if it looks a bit blotchy, that's fine. You kind of, that's an advantage. So just blacken out all this green paint here. As you can see, very, very light application, not piling it on. I don't want great big heavy build-ups of paint. I just want to just make sure it's black. And if it is blotchy, as I say, I don't care. That's almost an effect I'm after is blotchiness. Now we'll come over the top. Make sure that pylon is all black. As I say, it doesn't matter about the tones and the shades and all that yet because when we come along after we'll be doing all that then and there we go so that's that tank done I'm just going to bl blast some in there okay I'm just going to make sure we didn't go all the way around the front and we can see there if we look up underneath the t under the masking you can see green under there that's fine, that's what you're looking for. You don't want to go spraying in like this because you don't want the paint to be going up under. You want it to stay on the edge. We'll do the same on this engine here. Now I haven't masked off those tail cones um, purely because, I'll be totally honest, I forgot. I'm not going to make excuses, I forgot. So I may have to paint them again. I could just brush something on them. There we go, as I say, just lightly fogging it on, not trying to pile it in. Okay, and then we've got some overspray down here. Okay, and always staying 90 degrees. Don't ever get the paint going underneath. circles, going straight lines, do whatever you want, just get your black on there. And I'm just going to blow in here. In the front, so I should have actually put some sausages in there, but I haven't. I'm just going to blow some black paint in here. Okay. And I'm going to grab the other wing and do that in case I forget. I'm going to grab the other wing and do that at the same time. 
So the blade comes back paint in there. Put some black paint in there. And then turn them over. There we go. Just to make sure that was done. So that's that done. Now I'm just going to check there's no overspray down here. There's not. So now we can come along to this engine here and just do the same again, go in circles if you like. And if you get some overspray up on the green, that's not an issue, it will be part of the weathering. And if you look at your references, you can really go to town. You can have some of these panels in zinc chromate or whatever. Like I said, the most important thing is staying 90 degrees to your blue tack and not letting the paint get underneath. Okay, so I'll get the other one done off camera and then I'll come back and we'll look at taking it off and see how it looks. Right, there we go. So that's both the wings done now. So that's the second one. Let's grab the first one because that'll be drier and then we can take the sausages off and see how it looks and there we go pleased with that a little bit of a white line there left from the blue tack that will just get a grab blue tack rub it over it and it disappears and there we are same here just rip that one off pull them all off and what we end up with is this nice soft yet hard black line for our camouflage Okay, again, we've got that white line there you can see in here. Just grab another piece of blue tack, white tack, rub it over it, and it will get rid of it like that. Okay, another one there. Some more up here. This needs a bit of a tidy up here where that blue tack was a bit of a mess, but that's no problem. All we've got to do is get the white tack on the black and go over again with the green. So, not a problem. Um, you know, all of this is reversible. You, you, you know, you can keep messing up and keep going back and just, you know, if you want to, if you want to tighten that line up, you can just come in with the blue tack, the white tack again on there and spray the green, whatever. Just, you know, see how it looks really. But um, just bear in mind, it is a war machine. It wasn't painted to look pretty. It was painted to be camouflaged. Uh, so you can see here, we've got the, the line there messed up again. So, and we can see there we've got some white tack staining. Okay, and there's a gouge in the plastic there as well, which we're not going to worry about. Let's just take all these off. Again, we've got that line there, you can see, just rub that away. Another one there. And what you can see is a soft yet hard line. And I think both these wing tanks are going to need doing again. I'll do those off camera. Um, basically, I just need to mask them up again and redo the black. So what I'll probably do is spray the green around again and then just basically repeat this process. You can see we've got some white there from the blue tack as well. So there we go. Now we've got to look at doing the pylons. Okay, so I looked at using the sausages in this area and it's extremely difficult because... Getting a soft line into a 90 degree corner is going to be very, very difficult. So what I've decided to do is use tape. Now, <clears throat> the tape you can see here, this is the 10 millimeter Tamiya tape. But underneath there, this two millimeter wide stuff is this Sizo curve tape. Now, this is available from Premium Hobbies down in Western Supermare. And basically, it's a really good tape because I have done a, um, a video on it. You, you can actually produce curves. The, the Tamiya tape does the same stuff, the thin vinyl tape, but this is much thinner and you can kind of make it go <clears throat> into all sorts of curves. You can see there and it, it just goes without wrinkling up. It's really, really good stuff and um, I like it and uh, it's 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 great. It comes. I've, I've used the three millimeter. We've got a two millimeter, there's a three millimeter and a six millimeter. Again, keep your blue tack out of the way because as soon as it sees tape, that's it. It sticks to it like the proverbial to a blanket. So I'm going to spray this and then I'm going to see if I can get away with using the tape again because 
I'm tight fisted like that. I like to try and reuse tape where I can. So I'm just going to make sure that's down in there and then very lightly just test my spray. Just see that look? That's the difference with Tamiya paint and Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. Straight away that's been there for probably 20 minutes and just straight away it sprays again. If that had been VA here it would be all clogged up and dried up. So basically I'm just going to come in here, start from the back and just get some black paint on this pylon. Keeping it very, very light. If you, if you start to get it really wet, that's when you run the chance of it, the paint creeping under. Okay, so just keeping the paint dry, coming over the top and then down this side. Like so. It dries practically instantly. And there we are. That's our pylon done. Then we should be able to come along and take this tape off and reuse it. Come here with the get our fingers under the back here. Take that tape off of there. Then I'm going to get under here with my knackered old tweezers. Careful not to scratch the and there we go, we've got a nice sharp line around there for the base of the pylon. Okay now that may not be accurate but I'm afraid it's the best we're going to get. If I need to actually put a soft edge in there I'll have to do it manually with a brush and just break it down with some very thin paint. But um, I'll have a look, I'll check my references but it looks like on the instructions they've got it as a hard line so we will see. But at least we've got the, uh, the black now so you can see that engine pod is basically complete. I've got some detail work to do in the front but we'll do that once the model's finished. We may do it beforehand actually, but um, there we go, that's all dry. And you can see now we've got a black pylon, camouflaged engine, black underside, and that's exactly what we need. We can take all this masking tape off here as well from the underside, and then we've got our polished metal area behind the engine, all looking good. So you can see they're done now. Okay, so uh, that's all done now. I've also gone round and cleaned up these areas where they were a bit dodgy. In fact, that one's still not right, needs doing again. So actually, I'll show you how I do it. So basically, just get a little bit of uh, blue tack, white tack, make it into a sausage. Okay, you don't need to do the whole thing. So just do that, make it into a kind of sausage. Roll it out a bit on here. And then I'm just going to come over the top like so up to the pylon okay and then run down the side and all I'm going to do is get my bit of tissue just check my flow that's fine and all I'm going to do is just literally very lightly blow in like that hardly anything it's still not right so we come in we'll put the sausage on again make sure it comes up to the pylon Bring it round, look at what it is we're trying to cover, so there we go, we can do that, pull that back. Just paint it again, see how that looks, there we go, done. So as I say, it's easy to correct and keep going back, if you wanted to make the green come back you do the same thing again, but use the green, it's, it's, um, it's not that difficult, really isn't. So. There we go. Now I also want to show you here. Um, this was the same tape. This is this. There is no. You see, there's no scrap tape. I used the same pieces of tape. So this is Tamiya 10 mil tape, and you can see how good that is still sticking on there. And I've done all four engines with it. So I'll take that piece off of there. We'll get that bit of tape off my tweezers because we don't want little stray bits of tape on your fingers or anything, especially when you're using blue tack, because it ruins it. And then we can 
come along here take this curved tape off and as you can see it's the same it's the same piece if you flick back and look you'll see it's the same pieces with the red bit on the end and I saw they would go on and do another four really really happy with that tape very very good indeed and yes I am promoting it because it's good um, I will always promote a good product and as you my regular followers know I will always tell you if I think a product isn't any good like Vallejo paint is not as good as everything else it works you can see there's a color down and I'm going to use it in this video because because it's for um for beginners and beginners might be working on the kitchen tables and not want to stink the house out with Viejo tape I can assure you if your uh, partner or whatever walks in the kitchen and you're spraying with that they'll say well that smells nice because it literally does it does literally smell perfumey <laughs> it really is it's not just a nice smell like some people like the smell of tarmac and some like the smell of petrol it is literally a nice smell so um there we go and there's those engines done as well those pylons and we'll take that tape off of there get rid of it always get the tape off as soon as you can if you leave it on there you will find that it will um it may start to attack the paint so uh there we go so that, those bits now have done their job so they can go in the bin but this stuff really impressed with it the other thing i found was really incredible if you rub it you will see that the paint comes off and it becomes like another new piece of tape it also stretches i've just noticed look at that quite incredible great for doing the uh, curved canopies and stuff we'll uh, we'll be trying that on this so there we go now i am just going to give you another quick demonstration of these sausages because we did it in part 18 but it didn't work that well because of the paint was playing up and everything so i'm going to use my junky wing and i'll show you the difference of big and small sausages and stuff right so here's our junky wing again and i've got a big sausage <laughs> yeah and got a skinny sausage that's more appropriate and um <clears throat> basically what i'm going to do is show you the difference if i keep i keep the airbrush 90 degrees and just blow over like this you will see Again, not piling the paint on, keep it light, don't go piling it on. Keep your paint well thin, put it on lightly, put it on many coats and you'll get a lovely finish. And then on this one, the same again. circles go along the edge you can do whatever you want if you want to do your black basin you can do that as well so there we go and you can see then we'll get with this one you get a fairly tight edge and with this one you get a much softer edge you can see the difference this one's softer that one's tighter and also you can see there this Vallejo paint just peels off okay right Another way you can do it is with paper. I've got three bobs of white tack there. I've cut the pattern into a piece of paper. So I can put that on there like that. All right, and just push the push the blue tack down. Now the trouble with this one is quite aggressive and you can see I'm pushing this wing and it's squeaking in the middle because it has no strength. And just make sure the paper is fairly even. You don't want it to be too up and down. And then what you can do is come along with your airbrush and just blow over the edge like that this is another way to do it if you want to take your um your instructions and and blow them up four times or whatever it is and then you can cut the cut the paper patterns out and do it this way and this is another way to get your camouflage marked out for you there you go and that gives you a very soft edge which would be more suitable for something like a 24th scale there's a piece of decal in that blue tack there so we get that out and throw it away right so there you go um and of course the other way you can do it is freehand and this is what i was trying to show you in the video yesterday for me is basically you know you can come in really tight get a really fine line like so 
Okay, if you've got a really steady hand, you can use that for the for the black lines you get on uh, World War One armament. You can also take the tip off, come in really close, and get an even finer line like that. Okay, and this is what I'm saying about Viejo paint. You know, they might get in touch with me and say, you shouldn't say our paint is rubber, well, it's, it's not good, but it's clearly not as good as this because you can't do this with it. Well, I can't anyway. And I mean, this paint has been sat in this airbrush for like an hour. You know, and look at that, I can get a fine line. I can come along here, I can write my name. You can do all sorts of stuff. You can come in on an angle, do like shading. This is all without the tip. Yeah, you can do lots and lots of things. You can even paint a whole model. You, could, you can paint large areas without the tip, or without the end cap. The only thing you have to be careful of is you don't bang the end of your needle. But, um, you know, you can come along and tighten up your camouflage if you want to, if you think that edge there is a little bit too soft or that corner there is a bit too hard, you just want to round it off a bit, you can come in and just radius it off like so. There you go. And then when that dries, just cut to air, dry it out. You hardly know it was there. So the airbrush is a, is a great tool and it's there to be used. But what you mustn't do is that. That's what you don't want to do. That's called spidering. And that's where you've got too much paint and you blow it all around. I mean, you could use it for an effect. You know, if you wanted to do a paint a tree or something on the, on the side of your model. But uh, there you go. So that's your next little tip for airbrushing. Right then, here we are back again. This is <laughs> two days later now, so I didn't remember where I left off, but did anybody spot the mistake? And it's now been corrected. And the other thing, I've also gone around and changed the masking line. You can see that I've got it a lot straighter because I basically got this book out. Let's just stand up and make sure you're not all glossed out. And if we go back to the early part of the book where we've got the B52Ds, we can see that this one here it's got quite a squiggly line on it. However, it's been painted for a bombing competition. If we look at the others, like this big picture of these engines, this one here, this one here, that one there, well not that one there. We look around and we can see that most of them have just very, very plain, sort of very undecorative lines. Okay? So that's what I've decided to do. And I think what it probably is, the pictures we see with them all nice and squiggly and perfect, I think that's probably restored aircraft, aircraft that have been painted for a competition or a mission or something, maybe brand new aircraft, I don't know. But I think in the field, they are more like this. So, and also it's worth looking at remembering they don't, the, the paint doesn't come right down the sides of the engines. It's quite high on the top. So when you sort of look from the side, you sort of see mainly black. So the next thing I want to do now, is get the underside of these wings painted before we actually fit them to the fuselage. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on for the rest of this this uh, this this part. So um, what we need to do is mask off these flaps, and I'm going to show you how I do this because remember, guys, this is a beginner's video. So if you remember, we've painted these flap internals. The only thing I want to know, I don't know if anybody can tell me. Please don't tell me what you think. Please tell me what you know. It's factual. When the flaps are open, are the upper sections of the flaps this synchromic colour? I know the trailing edge is going to be the same as camouflage, but as the flap comes down, is this area you see here synchromate? I think it is, but if you look at the later ones, the H's and everything, they're not. So that's a question I'd like to ask. Right, so I'm going to take some, this is some um, 10mm Mr. Hobby masking tape. It's the same as the Tamiya tape, but it is slightly more sticky. And I'm just going to stick this on here. I'm going to butt this into the corner like so. And then I'm just going to stick that down 
like that and that's worked out perfect actually because where we go over these tracks we just need to put a slit in the tape and let it slit, split open like so and then using a cotton bud I'm just going to push the tape in like that okay and then with the side of the cotton bud we can roll it down get it down nice and firm if it does lift any paint when we take it off we'll just do local repairs now to trim it on the edge so that we get a nice line I'm just going to come along with my blade what I do is rest the blade on the surface and just slide along now this will take some practice if the blade is like this you will dig in if the blade is like this you'll leave it high you need to find the perfect line to cut with just grab that tape there so keep hold of it cut around that pylon and then come in from this side and just slice the tape away like so and then the other thing you can do if you really want to put this down out of the way these little bits and pieces to get out of your nerves um, always make sure you got these little bits and pieces off your fingers as well the other thing you can do is come along with a fairly, this is a 400, a fairly smooth sanding stick and just sand off, off the edge of the tape and that'll just take any little bits and pieces off that are remaining. And you can see there's slight like scratch marks and that, we don't worry about that. This is going to be a weathered model so <clears throat> we're not too bothered about that. So take another piece off and then this piece can come from here. And it can go around so we'll push that into there first and this doesn't apply just for this model this is for any model when you're doing your masking make sure you you sort of deal with if you put the whole thing down and start pushing it the masking tape will pull away from the corner so it's always best to make sure you've got one area down and then come into the corner and then come back all right now what I'm going to do there is put a crease in the tape Now it's not really too important here because we're going to have to be reworking that area anyway. But you can see how that tape has pulled away. That's because I put it down here first before I did the corner. So pull the tape back, push it into the corner, and then do like that. Okay, as I say, not too worried about that area because it's going to have to be reworked anyway once we've dealt with the, um, the fuselage join. See the tape's being a bit tough here, doesn't want to cut up. There we go. Just like that. And then push it all in. That's that done. And then same on the other side. So we'll put the tape into the corner like so. Push it down with a cotton bud. There we go. And again, I'm going to pull this back now. So we've got a corner here, a corner there for it to go into. So I'm going to make sure the tape is down there and I'm going to use my tweezers and push the tape into that corner like so. There we go. Tape out the way, and then I'm going to make a slit here, fold that piece around. 
Okay, so that it's sticking there rather than having hanging hanging around the middle of nowhere. There we go. I'm just going to use the end of my tweezers just to push the tape into that corner. There we go. That's that done. And then come along with our cheap masking tape. What I'm going to do is cut the end square <clears throat> or squarish, and then I can push this into this corner here. Push it down and then roll it around there and then slice it off, fold it over, Put another piece there, slice it off, fold it over and then this piece can go in here. Okay just like that now I need a piece in that corner, you see that corner we've got a gap so I'm just going to put a piece of this tape in there, use my tweezers, nope not gone in properly, there we go that's gone in properly now, just to make sure we don't get any black overspray, but if we do we can touch it up it's easy, it's all going to be um, oil washed and weathered anyway in here. Get some more of this tape, cut the end off square, get rid of that. That's not very square is it? It's better. Put that in there like so and then cut it off, fold it over Put that in there like so, fold it over, got another piece, now what I'm not going to do here is try and cover over that area with one piece of tape, so what I'll do here is cut that kind of shape into it and I've done that completely wrong, made a complete pig's ear of that. There we go, so we can lay that down there and then push it down in. Use a cotton bud, make sure that sticks up in there. There we go, that's that done. So as you can see a lot of the time I use cheap masking tape rather than your expensive stuff because this is like a pound a roll and this is like four pounds a roll you know so it's always worth using the cheap stuff if you can. There's no point in wasting money even if you're a millionaire it's just pointless. The other good thing with this masking tape is that if it's real cheap rubbish like from you get from the supermarket it's not very sticky. So it won't destroy your paint. The only thing is, if you leave it on too long, it will actually leave marks. Um, we've all seen it where you get like the, the white powdery marks left. So I'll get on and do this one the same. Undercarriage bay there is basically the same. What we do is just get the masking tape, put a piece in, put a piece in like so. Push it down in with a cotton bud. Make sure it goes down in. If you want to get into tight corners, you can use a... A toothpick, cocktail stick, just get one out, and then what you can do is lift the tape here from that side, and then you can push it down in that side with the cotton, the cocktail stick, and get your get it sharp into the corners. But in this area, there's no real point because it's the top we're worried about, not the bottom. If we were doing a canopy or something, we'd want to be pushing the the tape into the uh, into the corner. So come along here we've left hardly anything there so it might be better to try and scrape that no it's not going to come off so we do need to cut it I'm just going to lift the tape it should make it easier to cut there we go just push that down in there rather than try and and stick it and just make sure it's up against the edge push it down in 
job done and then we can come here and we can cut along cut along that edge makes it easier if it's not stuck down there we are job done so I'll finish that off the same do this one here and then I'll come back okay so with everything masked up we now need to start looking at some painting and uh, this is actually about six eight hours after I did the last bit so I've um, been out in the Land Rover so for those that complain about my dirty fingers there you go nice grubby grounding dirt there we've got a cut as well with some dirt in it so right um, black paint I have got four here I have more on the shelf for example I have this one here which is a um, SCC 14 blue black and I'm just thinking I've also got this one in here which is in the the Russian colors the um, the black 6RP so I think we might have a look at this one as well let's have a look so they're all basically very very dark that's a bit a little bit too gray I think so I won't bother with that one but um basically I've got here I've got XF85 which is rubber black which is a kind of very very dark gray then we've got the X18 which is a semi-gloss black and this I think is the blackest of the blacks then we've got the XF1 which is also black but obviously flat and then I've got the um H77 Mr Hobby which is a tire black now if I turn the jars over they have all been shaken and stirred you can see the difference in the colors now if I can just make sure we've got no light, but you can see there's a there's a different shades there. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do initially is run around all this area here where we've got the overspray, and basically wherever I need to touch up, I'm gonna get some X18 in there to give us a black semi-gloss base. So I'll do that now. Okay, so we've got the um the X18 mixed up, about 70% thinners, 30% paint roughly. And I'm just gonna do a little test piece there we go and then all I'm going to do is just very lightly go over these areas where we've got the masking and just get rid of this zinc chromate and if you notice if Ron's watching what I'm doing is going very very lightly uh, over the masking tape if you flood it the paint is likely to creep under so best to keep it nice and dry you can see I'm basically painting it dry, it's sort of drying as soon as it hits the model and that will, that will stop it creeping under. If you've got any gaps it'll still get blown under but if you make it wet it will capillary under where there's any gaps where the, you know, where the tape isn't quite down or whatever. But if you keep it dry the other thing you can do is if you go over and spray it first with zinc chromate and anywhere the, where the paint's going to creep the paint that creeps will be zinc chromate so it'll creep under and it'll show and uh, if you look at Ron's video he did that with his decks um, unfortunately though it's misunderstood me and he's brushed it on um, quite heavily and it's all capillaried under the tape but most of the problem there is as we discussed before in the beginners video um, because of the rough surface he's got the tape isn't sort of going down very well it's almost like the tape is sat on pinheads rather than being on the surface so basically that's what's happened there. But uh, enough about Ron. Let's get this B52 done. So, basically, just going to paint in all these areas. And as you can see, airbrushing is all about taking it very, very steady, very, very slow. And you can see we've got all the marks on here, all the blemishes from the from the paint that we put on before the aerosol because it's basically um, kind of keyed into the plastic not really too fussed about this area here because we'll have seam work to do so I'll stay away from the seam there we go now I just want to get these Pylons done wherever the um, aerosol missed. Look up in here. Just going to get some paint in there. Okay, 
just basically anywhere that the aerosol didn't get to or where there's a funny mark left behind here on this engine we've got some silver overspray same here some overspray on there this mask is up out of the way as you can see once again keeping it very very light <clears throat> go I'll just come around this side of this pylon you can see under here there's some bits that are missed so we can just come along with the airbrush go along there get the black paint in there and there we are And the zinc chromate is picked up on that corner of that pylon, so we'll get in there and get that out. We've also got some black around here because I, I, I sprayed these areas on the back of the tanks green. Of course, we should have left that and done it afterwards. So I'm going to get rid of that green over spray there. Sorry if that was off camera, guys. Just go around here and make sure we don't have any green overspray because what we're going to do is we'll put a, a white tack worm in there and then we'll do the um, the green afterwards. And you can see we've got all these blemishes in the paint. I'm just going to leave them. They're absolutely fine. We're going to be overpainting the whole of this anyway with different shades. And I just wanted to have a black base to work with. Now I'm going to be showing you some techniques and they're going to be in the next video now, they're not going to be in this one. Basically because I want to get this out to you guys and it is currently half past eight at night and I haven't got an extractor on or anything and the house is going to stink of this paint. So do the same over here, make sure we've got no overspray. Get this wing out of the way. Go. Once again, we're going to get in and get rid of that zinc chromate around there. I think we're about to run out of paint. And hopefully, this is good for you beginners out there, newbies to the airbrush. You can see just how lightly. You need to be using it so basically I'm going to come along I'm using this real colors high compatibility thinner um, only purely because it doesn't smell as bad as the um, Mr. Color leveling thinners and as I said I haven't got any windows up or extraction or anything and um, which one was I using X18 yeah so basically um, it doesn't smell as bad so that's why I'm using it the the least smelly one would be the Tamiya or indeed a water alcohol mix but the trouble is with that you don't tend to get the the bonding capabilities um, let's just put one more brush of paint in there that's just to show you that I do actually mix in the cup which a lot of people go oh my god you shouldn't be doing that you ruin your model and your airbrush will be worn out within three minutes and you'll die of a young age and die of a young age no die a young age and um yeah so basically just going in covering up this zinc chromate nice and light
Okay, so that's that done. Now I'm going to work on these pylons. Some areas on there that got missed, some areas in there. And in there we want to get in. Go. And then again on these engine pylons, we've got the that metallic overspray on there, which we should just get rid of. Same on this side, look. Coming on the other side, get rid of that metallic overspray on there. And on this wing tank. Just gonna get onto these pylons, cover up that green. Right, so there we go. So I'm happy with that's gone. Um, I've got paint in the airbrush, I may as well use it up. So I'm just going to come along and paint over any areas where there are blemishes or whatever. Some black colour in there. There we go, we're out of paint now. So there we are. So that's our wings now ready to start doing some creative work on. And um, basically, that's going to be formed the next part of the video. And uh, as I say, I've never done this before. So it's going to be a learning curve for me, and I'll probably make a few mistakes. So it's part um, what's that? Part twenty is going to be one of those videos where you're going to see me doing stuff. I've got a can of Foster's here, lovely. Mm. Well, you see me doing stuff, and then I'm going to go, "Hang on, that hasn't worked very well." Or you might look, see the effect and like it. So basically, that's where it's going to go, and. Um, so make sure you see part 90, uh, part 20, especially if you're new to the hobby, and uh, we can learn some stuff together. That'd be fun. So um, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and I'll see you all soon. I think tomorrow's going to be a wet and horrible day, so is the day after, so I'll probably get more of this done rather than working on the Land Rover. So um, see you all soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now. Happy modelling, and stay safe.